Hello friends, neighbors, I'm John, your whiskey neighbor here. Welcome down to the neck and happy World Whiskey Day. Normally I'm doing a review on Saturday, but I did a little quick uh, chair at a long weekend yesterday and World Whiskey Day started by, I think Blair Bowman when he was still in university is just to celebrate whiskey. And when I thought about celebrating whiskey and having fun and however you want it, pour it over whatever, rocks, neat, have tastings, I thought about James. James is a friend who's been sharing whiskey now with me for a few years. And last time he saw me, you know, he gave me a bunch of bottles to try that I've got to share with you. And then he just gave me a little sample bottle and said, well, John, I was thinking you'd pretty much enjoy this Glen Caddam 10. And I thought that's the spirit of World Whiskey Day, just to share whiskey with a friend. So thank you, James. For us here today, I'm going to share my thoughts. Glen Caddam 10, uh, it's a Highland Scotch. I'll tell you more a bit about its casking and whatnot, but why don't you pour a little whiskey if you find yourself at a moment and we'll share some thoughts on this. And then depending on where this flavor tastes me, I'm gonna pour something from Canada because I believe uh, I should be celebrating with the world some of the excellent whiskey that comes here from Canada. So I'm starting with whiskey from a friend and I'll end with whiskey from Canada. Three, four. Thanks for coming back. As I said, we're going to start with what I think the intent of World Whiskey Day is, which is share some whiskey with a friend. Thank you, James. This is Glen Caddam 10. And I don't really have a bottle shot because this sample bottle is just a little too small. But, you know, Glen Caddam is a Highland Scotch. It's part of the uh, uh, Pinot Ricard or Chivas Brothers wheelhouse. Most of this, it's actually a large distillery, goes into Ballantines. I should shoot some of that blend for you guys, but it's a big big seller. A quick search on YouTube said in 2021, just a couple years ago, it was like the second highest selling scotch. Wow. I had no idea about that. But I usually drink single malts and Glen Caddam is released the way I'd like it. Non-chill filtered, no color added. This one's just ex-bourbon and I think I don't spend enough time considering just spirit in X bourbon young 10 years i like that it has an age stamp so we'll see where glen Caddam takes me this is just nose and taste for this highland scotch it is fresh and fruity it is light orchard fruit sweet pear maybe white grape something kind of bright a little richer fruits as well but it's it's staying in that bright, light, fresh, maybe a little bit of lemon, but but it hasn't pinched in sour yet. It's just sweet and light, kind of a nice sweet fruit cup. I know it's not a complicated tasting note, but just you know that nice sweet fruit syrup. Uh, uh, what are the, what's in there? Some cut pears, a little bit of apple, maybe, but like a green apple. Boy, that is a fresh nose. Little bit of spice on the end. See where it goes on the palate. Slancha. This is a very fresh Highland Scotch. It is um, still retains fruity, but now, of course, in the palate, we get just, just a nice backbone of oak, but it is not oaky. I'm just saying it's got a little bit of that structure, a little bit of that woodiness that, that gives backbone to that. It's almost like a nice, light, fruity wine, um, maltiness, a bit of malt sugars. It's got... Uh, what is that spice that I'm chasing? Allspice? No, it's a, it's something, something just a little bit ground, just slight almond. Um, I mean, I'm going to try another sip and see where it goes, but it is maintaining that nice, fresh, light citrus, but mostly fresh cut orchard fruit. Better try another sip. Sancho. Second sip, instead of bringing more oak, which is common for me in second sips, is I'm getting almost a bit more roundedness, a bit of creamy. Uh, so the fruits are a little bit more like melon, a little bit more like maybe even slight banana. I'm not a big banana person, but that, you know, banana, like when, when I'm eating that fruit, it, it, it's really got a lot of body and almost creaminess to it. I'm going to say this has gone in that direction. So it started light, fruity. Then I found that structure and now it's, it's creamy. It's full. This is delightful. Um, I haven't paid attention to Glen Caddam and I'd like to know what they cost. In fact, I didn't even look that up online and what it cost in my neighborhood, but 
released the way it should be, natural, no color, non-chill filter, 46%. And this nice cream, this is an excellent example of an ex-bourbon single malt Highland Scotch. James, thank you so much for sharing that with me. I'm not giving it a star rating, but I am saying that I am really, really enjoying this. All right, as I said in the opener, it really is important for me on World Whiskey Day to share some Canadian whiskey. And I wanted to get myself or leave myself the opportunity to share something or that might be somewhat similar, just to, I didn't want to, I could have done absolutely the opposite, something complete contrast. But this Glen Caddam actually has reminded me in my memory of this Two Brewers uh, classic release number 35. Now I've shared this with you uh, a few times. This is uh, two brewers out of Yukon. You know, they make fantastic Canadian single malt. Uh, it's also natural, non-chill filter. It's all barley. It's probably around the eight years, so it's probably a little younger than the 10. It's significantly darker. Uh, that's an interesting, you know, as natural color, being younger. So to me, I think they're gonna have, because they have a mix of casts in here. I wonder if there's a little bit of new oak or something that's gonna give it a little bit of that darker color. But it is, you know, not uh, specialized cast, not unique finishing. This is from their classic line. It's about as clean and as clear as their single malt comes, 46%. Uh, so let's see what this classic 35 in today's tasting is like. Very reminiscent of, of some of the notes here, but instead of the lighter fruit side, this is a little spicier and definitely a little oakier. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say from that from that malt sugar oak combination, I'm also getting a little more cinnamon, a little more nut, a little more vanilla. Yeah, there's a little more um, huskiness to this. Let's try it on the palate, Sancha. For what I was going for, this is is really nice comparison because they, they are both... I think emphasizing their spirit. This this is also somewhat creamy, but it definitely has a little more cinnamon, a little more almost clove, a little nutmeg almost. It's it's a broader spice palette. It's more malty, more huskier, more 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 grain husk notes to it, and that's okay. It's also spirit driven. Very nice on the palate. Just a little bit hotter and a little bit spicier. This is clean, really, really gentle and light. But both excellent examples of single malts, 46%, the way they should be, natural, non-chill filter and non-colored. Look, I think the intent of World Whiskey Day is just to celebrate whiskey. Certainly, everything I've read about it is, it's not a snobbery whiskey day. You don't have to know anything about whiskey. In fact, it's like, have you never had whiskey? Uh, go find an event. If you can't find an event or a tasting, just buy a bottle and uh, create your own event. So I think that's the intent. I hope today you have a little bit of time to find some nice whiskey with some friends or family or yourself in a good book. Maybe the weather's nice, sit on the deck and just enjoy a dram of this liquid of life. Thank you for joining me here on my journey. Thank you for uh, this, James. And uh, just, just thanks for sharing a few moments here. Maybe share below when you get a chance. What did you do today on World Whiskey Day?